Hey Matt, did you send out the golden ticket yet? What are you talking about? Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop, working on the heavy wrecker. We had a couple names suggested for this. The the Morhog? The Mor Morthog or Morthog? I I'm thinking about just naming it like the A10 Warthog. Just the Warthog. The Warthog? Just go yeah. with Warthog. The Tank Buster. You gotta draw the little jaws on the side. Yeah. We just went and picked up this from Flog. So I wanna show you how it started. Matt made me this. And we turned it into an AutoCAD file. Now it's this. Matchy same, matchy. Same thing. And now we're gonna go see if it fits. Okay, right. here it goes. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see the clearance around the steering shaft. How's that looking? Oh, there's tons. Beautiful. Okay. Just almost like we planned it. We made a list. Here it is. Oh, close. We're not gonna bore you by reading through this whole list, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna look at the things that we have to have to get to King of the Hammers. We have to have it. And then we're gonna make a list of things that we would like to have for King of the Hammers, and then a list of things that we just don't need or want for King of the Hammers. Okay, something that we absolutely need, brake lines. We have to have that to go to King of the Hammers. Something that we don't actually have to have is a transfer case shifter. We could shift it from outside the vehicle if we have to. Okay, so, I think we really want that though. We do really want that, but we don't have to what have it. What don't we need? What don't we need to go to King of the Hammers? We don't need tail lights. All right, so we're trying to focus on have to haves today? Yes. Okay. So here's what's happening. I'm headed out to Paul's. Jamie and I are gonna head out there. I'm gonna take these rotors out. Paul's, we're gonna turn them down. We're gonna take a half inch off the outside. Exactly one pie inches off the circumference. You're gonna have to imagine with me. You're gonna have to use your imagination. But this threads into there. So I can put a washer-like thing, and this washer, we're gonna make a beefier washer than this, but, but for demonstration purposes, we're gonna put that on there. And then we're gonna weld a pipe to it like that. And so that slips over this, and when the ram gets to a certain point, it hits the end of this and stops. And so this, the ram has the stops. You can do it internally. And you can also do it externally. It's perfectly acceptable. Lots of people do it. Isn't that right, Rory? I completely agree. So I just showed you how it's going to work. Now I got to show you what I'm going to do about it. So this is some thicker wall DOM. It doesn't need to be thicker for strength, but I want more surface area pressing on the end of the ram. So I'm using this thicker pipe. All right. So. I'm gonna make four of these. I'm just gonna make them too long and we can cut them down to whatever length they need to be later after we do an alignment. Do an alignment. And then, but the problem we have right now is these are basically the exact same size. So this was probably an inch and a half rod that they made this ram out of, and then they chromed it. And this is exactly an inch and a half. So we've got a chrome thickness of interference. So while I'm out there at Paul's, I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe take a, a 10 thousandths cut or something, and then uh, we'll be able to build those things I just showed you. All right, Lizzie, I'm leaving you in charge. Oh, so boy. Tom has to do what you say. All right, I hope she says good things. Matt's gonna have some serious FOMO while we're gone, and he really, he is missing out, because this is gonna be awesome. But I'm going to be working on the wrecker. I'm going to be moving this project forward. We're getting closer to the tow truck feats of strength and airing of grievances. And I'm excited about that because I am moving the project forward, even though I'm not doing it in my own shop. Here we go. Let's take it away. <laughs> so we have all of these parts from Flog that we are going to weld in around the airbags and stuff on the rear axle. Tom Tom knows where they're going, uh, but I'm going to weld them, so we'll show you. Where do they go? So to get it back there, we gotta have to take those tires off. So we only have one set of jack stands that'll hold this giant wrecker. So we're gonna put the front tires back on, take the back ones off so Lizzie can get in there and we'll get this stuff welded up. So I just soak some rags in water and I just wrap them around the spring like that. I think these rags are Matt's old pajamas or something they had at their house that they just cut into scraps. So we're putting Matt's PJs to good use here to protect our shocks. All right, those are gonna fit, but these have to get bent. So it's kind of like fold on the dotted line. We cut these little slots, 
I'll cut them a little bit further and just bend them by hand and then we'll make them thick right in there. We'll use Matt's Lucky Claw Hammer. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. We'll go do the other one the exact same. Hey, Paul. Yeah. We are headed your way. We're late because of Jamie, but I want I wanted to come earlier, but she was like, no, I've got to do my hair. No, I was on the phone doing business stuff. That's why. That's what you always say, Jamie. Whatever. I know you're the problem. <laughs> Sounds good. Call me when you get there. But there's one thing we have to do before we leave town. What's that? 94 miles to empty. We're going to need fuel. And I'm calculating it's, no. six, it's 60 no. miles to Paul's house. No, it's and there's not. gas stations there. No. Look at that right there. There's plenty of fuel to make it. And there's no sense in oh, wasting man. more time. So guess who won the battle? Yeah, I guess we're gonna get some fuel. But it's not because we need fuel. It's because Jamie wanted some good ice and a drink. First poem I ever wrote was called What Jamie Says Goes. It was when we were dating. First poem I ever wrote for her. Do you have it still? I still have that, yeah. I still have it. He wrote a poem and then I should read it someday. And then my dad at the bottom of it wrote, you should have talked to me first. I could have told you all this. Do you know who you keep reminding me of every who? time you look over at me? Like Willie off Duck Dynasty. <laughs> Good afternoon. Well, howdy. What do you got all over that truck? Well, I don't know what this stuff is. You're probably... It's basically water at this point. This morning it was more snow. This morning it was snow. Now it's just water. I'll have a Fabrats burger. Do you want fries with your Fabrats? Sure. Awesome. And then some kind of drink. I've got your lunch because I'm renting your lathe today. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Well, in that <laughs> case... Lunch, in yeah. That case. Get you something real, real nice, you know, nice Clark. Nope, I'm no. good. Okay. All right, we got our food. We're heading back to the shop to consume it because, well, it's just muddy and wet here. We got all done with our lunch. We've had a, a good gab session, but now it's time to get to work because we've got tons of work to do. Yes, let's. I get, hope it's not tons. I hope it goes fast. We're gonna find out in a minute. Yeah, you're gonna love this lake. I left uh, Tom and Lizzie down there. Just don't get any of your important parts in these parts. Oh yeah, because. It'll eat them probably. <laughs> You'll look like a newspaper printer. The That's what it was. It, I only put one single belt on it for that reason. So you can stall it. Okay, I don't know about so, that. But you don't want to try it, trust okay. me. Go in a half uh -huh. inch on each side. Mm -hmm. You have safety spectacles. I'm gonna need them for this. Yeah, I'll find you some. Did Paul just make you wear safety glasses in this No, show? I'd wear it on a lathe. They want to have something to give to the widow when you die in this machine. This will hush your naysayers. When you're in my shop, you're safe. How about her? This is on? Okay. It seems like it feeds really fast. I believe that somebody put you up to that. What's this one? <laughs> See how close we are to getting this right. It needs to be 16 inches and we are not just a little bit more than 16. I want to make sure that they fit. So it probably wouldn't hurt if I was like the 16th less than 16. So I'm going to make one more pass. That is some precision right there. 
All right, we got disc number three here. Throw it up here without throwing the back out. I was able to cut this whole thing without sharpening this bit, and I'm not going to sharpen it before I start the next one. So, Dawn dish soap and water is working best for me. It's keeping the tip cool. I can touch it. The rotor's way cooler. There's a little heat in it, but not compared to what we were getting before. So, yeah. There's three of them oh, with yeah. the same diameter. And the I good got, thing is, is that it's not going to go fast enough to ever balance. Need to be oh yeah, they weren't so. they weren't balanced in the first place. Yeah. What's max speed you think? Sixty? I think be... I think sane speed is gonna be somewhere in a fifty five to yeah. sixty range. It'll go, it should do hundred miles an hour. You could drive it at that fast. That is <laughs> on the salt flats. Don't try to keep it straight, just let it go. Just let it go where it wants to go. That may be one ride that I'm opting out of. I, oh, I don't know that I get in with you for a hundred mile an hour trip. We'll in the strap truck. you in there. It's your no. hands, like the other side. Yeah, it's not I that bad. Out. What's yeah. bad is the metal shavings down my collar. <laughs> <laughs> They're like shaking down into my boots. All right, this will be a good comparison right here. That's the size difference. It's only half an inch, but we hold these up next to each other. It's a half an inch, you'll notice. Does that look different to you? They still feel the same weight. I can't even I can't even tell a difference in weight. Alright, that is the last one. Bingo! Clean up on aisle four. I like how Matt's the one that makes the mess. And he just Hold up, I've got. Anxiety. We can fix this in editing. I'm going to show you. All right, now that I've got that cleaned up, we're going to go to making a little bit more mess, after which I will probably clean it up again. That'll definitely do it. You see in there? Now we just gotta drive home. Uh, don't you have something to do before that? Oh, I've gotta clean up. Just like last time. So, Paul just pointed out that I called rotors calipers. And if there's one thing I know, you can call a bighorn sheep a mountain goat in real life. But if you do it on the internet, <laughs> You're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Oh, yeah. It's like you might be able to get it reduced to murder <laughs> if you, for like if you have a history of good behavior, but that's as low as they're gonna reduce yep. the charges. Yeah, pretty much. You're done. Huh? What are you gonna do? <laughs> All right. It was super awesome of Paul and the Fabrats crew to let us come up, interrupt their entire day. It was amazing. We couldn't have done it without them. We really appreciate these guys. But we're going to leave them up here in the snow and <laughs> the cold. We're going to go back down there and we're going to work on the wrecker. I will uh, repay the favor one of these days. You will need something that I have and I'll be there. This is why Paul's so bad at making deals. Baby, that's why I. That is <laughs> exactly why, why it happens. <laughs> okay, Can we're going to give him a chance to redeem himself. All right, you're going to have something I need. There we go. And you're going to come take it. Yes, with per baby, you won't even know. <laughs> All right. Well, if he sticks with plan B instead of plan A, <laughs> he could end up even. <laughs> oh, that is good. All right, we're out of here. Peace out. And look, look at this lovely lady, Paul's mom. She's a, she's our grandma Lolly. Yeah, we love them. We love them. Thanks for coming, guys. What are we doing? I'm checking to see if I put the pipes in here. I don't remember doing it. How close are we to home? We're more than halfway. They are not in here. That's what we need to do tomorrow. I got them. Lizzie, come, uh, come help me get the rest of them out of the car. All right. What do you think of those? They look a lot different.
different. They're smaller, but somehow not any lighter. So I got the rotors turned and I've got the pipes turned for the limiting for the steering, but I do have some really bad news. Oh, what happened? I left the pipes up at Paul's shop. How did you do that? I don't know how I did it, but I remembered it when we were like past the Coral Peak Sand Dunes, like right before, oh, right after we crossed into Arizona. Yeah. So do you know what that means? So does somebody need to go get them? Paul says he's coming down Thursday, so. Hey Matt, did you send out the golden tickets yet? What are you talking about? The golden tickets for the Wrecker Olympics, the invitations. Oh. So we have an event coming up that doesn't even exist yet. We've been calling it the Wrecker Olympics or the Tow Truck Olympics. We finally got the clearance that we need to go ahead and do this. So there's going to be five participants in this year's event. And I'm going to be one of them with the heavy wrecker. And then there's three others that we know who are, but I'm not gonna tell you who they are. You're gonna have to find out. We're gonna be shipping them out. Golden tickets, is that what you said? Yeah, golden tickets for the invitations. Like Willy Wonka. Yeah, exactly. All right. Probably in a chocolate bar. <laughs> All right, so watch for that. We also have one more slot that is open and we're gonna let you guys comment who you think should be the fifth participant of the Tow Truck Olympics. And then we'll pick the most popular one. Is that yeah. how that works? Yep. Okay. Who do you guys want to see there? So this event is happening in southwestern Utah, right down in the corner at Sand Hollow State Park. It's going to be on March 9th, 10th, and 11th. It's going to be awesome. You can get your tickets for this event at mattsoffroadadventures.com. You can get those right now. You can also get them at the event. The tickets are $59, and what that gets you is, first of all, it gets you a cool t-shirt for the Wrecker event. It'll also get you into the park for all three days. The whole park for all three days. It also gets you a pass to ride the Mad Moose shuttle, which will take you from the parking lot up to where the Wrecker Olympics are going on. That'll save you some walking in the deep sand. <laughs> Make sure you get a ticket because if you show up without one not only do you miss the shuttle ride and the t-shirt but you also won't be entered in to the grand prize drawing which is going to be the equivalent of twenty to thirty thousand dollars it's going to be huge but you have to be present to win this event is march 9th 10th and 11th all right so number one this machine that we're building is rather complex and it has a lot of systems that need to interface with other systems so We've got to stop doing what we were doing because we were mounting these shock reservoirs. But now to see if that, if we tack them in the right place, we need to articulate this thing and move it around and see how that shock moves. Which means we're moving on to other things right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this up. <laughs> I want this to have a rake to it, so it's going to have uh, an eighth inch of a rake. It's sitting downhill like this. Okay, so Tom, let me let me explain to you the physics of what's going on here. So we're going to weld these on a little bit better. We'll leave a drain on the back, even though we're going to cap the top to keep sand and mud out of it. Then this goes on and gets welded on level and then supported front and rear. Lizzie can be working on this while we're doing everything else. We're doing an articulation test, so we're going to be doing things that are going to just be irritating you. Yeah, we're going to move it while you're welding because we're getting so good, we need to up the game a little bit. we got to make it harder. Yeah. Yep, you've leveled up. I've done that. Okay, let's see here. Well, that's pretty dang good. So while Lizzie's welding these in place, we're going to look at the limit straps and see what that's going to look like. Here we go. These are just little babies. I know, they're short, but they are stout. Check out, and they're fat. What's their rated at? 10,000 10, pounds. Per quarter. We might only need one limit yeah. strap. I think you got some space. Let's do some math really quick. Here's a teeter-totter. This is the, the tire. This is what's supporting it, okay? And then you have a strap from here to here. What's happening is, is the forces are down on this, the force is down on this, but the force is going this way and this way on this. And it's all of this. This is, so whatever this weighs, if this weighs 10,000 pounds, 
then this is holding 10,000 pounds and this has got to be at least 5,000 pounds of tension on that. So I think so one per corner. Do one per one. corner and if we break one, we put on two. Okay, so that's our hip shooting math with a free, what's that called? Free board? Free body diagram. Free body diagram, a little bit of bad math, some tinking. Are we, if we're at 20 and 5 eighths, I'll be okay. We're at 20 and 9 sixteenths. Oh. Did they get? What was, what was X max? 22 and 3 eighths. Yeah, we're definitely safe here. Your eyes. The tiniest bounce more. <coughs> tiniest bounce more. Where does that need to go? We're at zero right there. That welder. All right. All right, we've got the limit strap tabs on and we got one of them bolted up here. That's what keeps this axle from drooping down and hanging on the shock and hanging on the drive shaft and falling out on the trail. That's gonna be a consumable. Like we're gonna change those like once a year, no matter what. Once every time one breaks. <laughs> no, before they break. Okay, so what we're doing is we're getting our maximum amount of droop before the drive shaft binds. And then we're gonna calculate how far away we wanna stay from that. So obviously bind is really bad. So we don't ever want to get there. So now this is maximum vertical droop. We can get more articulation droop, but we can't have the middle of this axle drop any lower than this. So we're going to come down an inch and a half from this point. That is ready for a limit strap. When we do final assembly on these, we'll put a nylock on them because you don't want these tight. They need, to, they need to be able to swivel as the axle articulates. So Tom was thinking in the future, when we have more time, because we are in a thrash to get to KOH, we can always add a longer one here for more articulation, and we can put one in the middle that limits total, like, total droop. So yeah, what's stopping us from further droop is drive shaft angle. We've just got a short, stubby little drive shaft to get around the engine. It is what it is. So until we put a Tesla motor on this front axle, we're going to be uh, limited by the laws of physics that govern a drive shaft. All right, we're going to take a break here and go over and see Holly and Walter and check out the work on the Ultra 4 car. I'm kinda, I haven't seen it for weeks. Yeah, there should be some good progress. Yeah, so we're going to go check it out. We've got Jamie here. Tom, Tom. Hello. We're in the more of air because... For some reason, Jamie didn't bring her car out to work. I don't know how that happened. How did I think you I, get to work? I think I got tricked into this. How did we get to work? I dropped him off this morning and then went home. And then he picked me up at the house to go do something. Good and job. then he made me go out to the yard. And now I have no vehicle. And he doesn't have a vehicle. Oh. So we get to drive the coolest car around. Never had one in my life before. But yeah, we got all the suspension fitted. All right. We're getting it. I mean, it's getting it. It's looking more like a race vehicle. Yes. Yeah. A little bit more than it did before. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, look at that. They look beefy. Yeah, they look super strong. Yeah. That's cool. Look here. All right, we've decided that all we're doing is keeping these guys from working on their project and we're not working on our project. So we're going to do the adult thing. We're going to say goodbye and go work on, on all the stuff that needs to be worked on. Boo to adult thing. No. All right, told you we'd be right back.
It is the next day. We are working on the record. What are you working on? I'm going to plasma cut a bunch of stuff for bump stops in the back. What are they going to look like? Like like this. Ah, someone's been doing some CAD down there, I can see. But we're putting some bump stops in right here. Tom's going to go cut those out. We're going to weld them together and yeah. see if they fit. So that just needs a place to bump. So there's a question in my mind if the wrecker spends much time on this bump stop, is it going to, you know, destroy it? And the answer is we're going to find out. We got to talk about something. Okay. The airbags, they work great when they're in the wrecker. They're designed to lift out of the little cup. But if this airbag is filled with air and it's not compressed, it's going to blow up. It won't. It's going to blow up. It won't. They're, they don't survive when they're not together under compression. So what's going to happen is we're going to fill it up with 100 PSI and then that tire is going to droop and go up in the air and that airbag is going to go boom. No, it won't. To make sure that that happens in a safe way, we need to blow one up. Okay. We need to take one of these. We have to know when and how it's going to fail. So we need to take one and fill it with like I would do a thousand PSI. A thousand? And just see, yeah, of hydrogen with sparks nearby. Okay. To make sure that there's a flame when it explodes. So these are rated at 600 PSI. But the most we're ever going to have them in them is 100 PSI. 100 PSI, but if it's not contained, what's it going to do? Well, I already know. Okay. All right, so we have a theory now. We have a battle of the engineers right now. I say this will handle 100 pounds free air, uncaptured. If it's just out there floating? Okay, it might handle 100. I don't know that it's gonna go much higher than that. Order another one of these, let's blow one up. I'm gonna order two, we'll blow so, one up, and then we'll have a spare. Because I talked to Chad about this. Yeah. I had this exact conversation with Chad. But in the conversation I had with Chad, I was you, and Chad was me. If these blow up and injure somebody, we know who to blame. Chad? Chad. I would like to know what I'm running, so we should know what their failure is. What's the nitrogen tank go to? Like Nine, about 900 or 1,000, I don't know. What if we heated it up a little bit? No. Nope. Who are you, whistling diesel? <laughs> we, could and shoot just... it. we could shoot it with a 22 and see how it fails if it got stabbed with a stick. Okay, I'm interested. I'm not, all, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm in, but I'm interested. So now that we're done talking about Tom's little science project, we're gonna get back to the real science. The science of making bump stops. I'm sure Matt had a vision for all of these, so we're gonna grab him and see how this stuff goes together. Which pace is you looking for? Um, this end and this end. Okay. It's like that. Okay. You hate it? No. So, uh, so we just need to. Should we come down and see if that gets us our inch and a half? Oh, we already know it does. We know it. All right. That needs to be welded and like that at a, at a 90 degree. Yeah. In fact, um, we've got a whole bunch of these. Okay. So we can put one in the middle. And then just chop out or the Or one gears. on each side. However you want to do it. Hmm. We have a whole bunch. Two of them would be very, very strong. Okay. Let's do two. Okay. We got a whole bunch. Do you want to polish these up? Yeah, I'll make them a little some better. More of these. So I'm going to attempt to drill the holes, drill them and tap them, to mount these while Tom is finishing those up. I should have glasses on for this one. For those of you that have the T-handles for taps, I'm really happy for you. But I've found in my life, they never fit where I'm tapping. So I don't even have one. Yeah, right here, they just they wouldn't have worked anyway, even if I would have had one. And yeah, this might not be the most convenient way to do this, but it is a way to do it. And that's the way I'm doing it. Hey, you got your hole drilled. Yeah, now I'm tapping it using adjustable wrench for a tap handle. 
I know. I'm bracing myself for the wrath. What you working on there, Lizzie? I am working on the the rod that is going to hang in Ed's closet. Oh, it's closet rod. Some people call them a closet rod. Get the close in there. A little bit. Okay, I'm gonna tap this last hole, but this time I've decided to do it with a drill because that other way was hard. That went fast. Yeah. I think Chad bought this. That's a good one. They broke one in the frame and they replaced oh. it with a high quality one. Thanks, Chad. Chad's crew. All right, is that hot? Yeah, oh yeah, it's cooking. Okay, let's see if it fits. Good. Think you can weld that on there? Not without cooking that strap. Oh, we'll pull that right yeah. out of there. But yeah, that'll weld in nice, I think. What's on fire? Just a rag. Oh, that's not very important. Your PJs, Matt. I burned your PJs. Yeah, you did. It's okay. I'm gonna go get them wet and then we'll be able to reuse them. That looks good. That'll hold? I think it will. Alright, come over here and check this out, Jonah. Right here, this is a weld bead using short circuit. That's traditional. That's going to be what 99.9% of the people are going to be familiar with. That's what we've been doing here forever, but this new machine we have can do pulse mig. So the other side I'm going to flip around, and if it doesn't turn out good, we'll cut this out. <laughs> pulse mig, eh? Pulse mig, you see? Pulls. I'm going to go up to quarter inch material. We like this up around 62. So now I'll try and pulse make this side. It's gonna sound very, very different. Okay, here it goes. Buttery smooth appearance. It sounds totally different. And I just drew a straight line or just pushed no, a straight line. No manipulation, no, no circles, circling. no weave. And what's crazy, and I would bet my life on it, <laughs> This one is twice as strong as this one. Pretty oh. cool. Wow, it's nuts. Are you gonna try to finish it with that? Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. We don't, this absolutely doesn't need this kind of strength, but it's gonna get it. I need to practice, so here we go. This thing's gonna be cooking hot when I'm done. Well, because it's not yet. There's more. There's gonna be more weight and weld on this than there was in the original. Oh man, you're going both sides and everything. Yeah. Whew. All right. I tried the tiniest bit of weld manipulation, and now it's smooth with a little ripple. That one there. I'm curious. Oh wow. Just a little, little buttery ripple. Look at the difference though between those two. Not only, cause you can tell that this one, you can tell that it's a little cold. It was struggling to get into there and that one's just. It is melted in with the yep. toe. Nuts. Okay, good we'll times. A couple yeah. more. You can tell when you're welding too cause your gloves heat up fast. This stuff is hot. It's cooking when it comes out. How hot is it? It's Put your hands by it. I don't touch that so bad. I saw smoke just come off from it, and that was from me. Okay, go ahead and lower it. Come tack it. Is it working? Yeah. Does it look like your clearance is the same? It's gonna be close enough. It's close enough. At close enough fabrication, it's close enough.
Okay, that's the last one. We'll let that cool down, then we can cycle it. Everything looks good. So look at this, I wanna point something out. The wrecker is now hovering in the air on a Challenger lift. So we couldn't have done that with the other lift. Limit straps, can we cross that off? Yeah, front and back, it's all done. Okay, what was three bump stops? We're half done. Yeah, we didn't do the front, yeah. We can do the front really fast. Let's drop it and see how much it crushes those bump stops. Let's do it. Going down? Yeah. Okay. These are a little far back. What does that mean? Okay, that's good. How are those back ones look? Coming where? Oh, they're squirched. You squirched them? Oh, man. What did we get? Inch and a half? Yeah, we've got a we've got an inch and a half of clearance on that. How much weight do you think those will ever see? Well, by the time they get to that point, they've compressed yeah. the coil spring and whatever air we have. And the shock's stopping it from moving fast. Yeah. So probably not a ton more than that. Mm -mm. We'd have to have a spring failure for that to happen. And coil springs just don't fail. They they start sagging over the years, but, but they don't. Crack. They're not. They don't break like. Leaf springs. leaf springs do. And when leaf springs break, they're usually fine unless they break up by the eye. All right, you're, you're happy, happy then? Yeah. Happy. So unsprung weight is just what it says. It's everything below the springs. Sprung weight is everything that the springs are suspending. In almost every like automotive genre, um, unsprung weight, they try to reduce it because the lighter it is, the faster the wheels will react. So in racing, desert racing, all, every, road racing, drifting, whatever, unsprung weight is really, really a bad thing. In the buggy rock crawler world, it is exactly opposite. Unsprung weight is good because that mean, that's as low as you can get the weight. And so when you're driving on like really steep things, um, let me show the picture of the Morver. I'm gonna show you the Morver driving through something. It looks like it's on its side. It is actually driving, it's driving. And that's, uh, that's because unsprung weight is high and the sprung weight is relatively low. So we can add weight to these axles as much as we want. We never have to worry about that. That's one nice thing about building this thing. Like, ah, throw some weight on the axle. We don't care. It's just as we suspected that side's down just a little bit. All right, Tom has made these really nice spacers for the front bump stops. Two inches was perfect. So we found some of this we had out there in the pile, and now we are drilling it. These drill bits are amazing. Look at these, look how they're shaped. They're even better in the drill press than in the... We got these from k and Cut, right there. k and Cut. All right, so Michelle is bringing us those sleeves that we turned down the other day right outside there and that will allow us to continue working on the wrecker Michelle says that we're not gonna lose unless we get it done because forfeit is not an option she's talking pretty tough for a second place finish there's a lot of people predicting second place but <laughs> who do they think is gonna get first this is going to be the difference between first and second place. So I should have taken them back. Should have, yeah. Dang it! I'm going to check them really close for sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what these do. Okay. These just slip over this right there. Oh, that looks like you could have done it without that. And they didn't fit. I had to turn them in there. Cool. Well, it's looking good. You'll see. When you watch the video, Michelle, when you, you pour, How are you? pour over every detail, every agonizing, boring detail of how we're building this truck, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go down with this. Oops. He, he had one job. I, I have one job to, it's not too bad, the thing gets sad.
Fin day. Did you put the fin out for the fin man? It's all I ask. So Tom was back here tacking and he tacked this to this instead of this to this. Well, he eventually tacked this to this. So I did good. But not before tacking that to that. Uh, you're focusing on the negative. I'm focusing on the truth. I got it. So fortunately, it was a pretty lousy tack. All right, it's as if he was never there. Oh, another fire. How many fires is that? Second or third. All right, for the first time in the history of the world, the world's largest off-road wrecker has bump stops it can set on. And that's what we're gonna do now, set it on the bump stops. This one right here doesn't have any support under it. So it's got a little bit of a bow in it right now. Yep, I'll go for it. For the first time ever, we were ready to go all the way down on the bump stops again. That's right. Okay, let's see. So we're hovering in the air, and now we're going clear down on the bump stops. Now that they're supported, and they're cooled off. Supported, cooled. Oh, good. No crushing. Man, they really do deflect quite a bit. Yeah. So that's full. This is full squish or full compression. So I am well aware that I don't need 16 inches of shock on this rig. There's some things that are limiting us. And number one is just the drive shaft angles. We've got these massive drive shafts. They have to snake around the engine and get to the differential that's in the center. It is what it is. We've got more shock than we need, and I'm okay with that. There is a tuning feature here. We can add a center limit strap that keeps the drive shaft angles where they need to be, and then we can put longer limit straps on the outside to get more articulation. And as much as we can get is going to be dictated by when how much room we can get here. So we're just going to see where it is, drive it around, see if we like it, see if we want more. If we want more, we'll tune and get as much as we can get or as much as we want. You're going to try and move the springs in a little bit, maybe? They can. They can just be moved in. Like an inch? Yeah, whatever a spring will allow. It's going to be crazy capable. Those ramp numbers, the RTI numbers, is that what they are, RTI? Yeah, yeah. People get kind of hung up on RTI numbers. They're like, hey, I can pull a 950 or a 1020 or whatever. These just yeah. crazy articulations. And then somebody with a leaf sprung, sprung buggy that's just balanced correctly will go and out wheel them. With, it has like an RTI of 500. Yeah. That guy's name is Rory. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got something to show you. I think you're gonna be excited about it. I'm excited about it. We're all excited about it. Lizzie's excited about it. Jumping up and down for joy. Clint's excited. Oh, I'm excited. And now we're gonna show you so you can be excited. Got something for you, Ed. What's that? The keys to oh. your new apartment. Oh, I got a new apartment. Yep. Uh, so Ed hasn't seen this yet. We've been keeping him out for a couple days. You guys have done a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome home, Ed. Oh. Everybody's in here. Can't thank you enough. Everybody's worked on it so much. And I got a nice door here with the blind inside the glass. A nice bed that goes up and down and tilts. And a big TV. And this 
Connor over there. Yeah, come look around. Matt built all that and put it together. It's great. I got a disposal there and a nice thing. But I doubt if I'll ever use it much because Max and Lady is my disposal. <laughs> Max, you know, Max, he'll eat anything. I've seen him eat lettuce, onions, tomatoes, mushrooms, just anything you get him, he'll eat it. <laughs> so I might not use that much. Yeah, but what's this you got? Microwave? Wow. Hot Not plate? Made. This is a new fridge. Go look at the gap in the bathroom. In the bathroom. They put all this new tile in here. This has done a great job. Nice closet. And sink here and here. A nice high toilet that Matt got and a safety rails. Safety rails in the shower. Yeah. You guys have really done a lot here. Thanks, everybody. Well, we got pizza for you. Huh? Yeah, we got pizza. We had to have dinner. Yeah, we had to be the first people to have dinner with you in your new apartment. So let us know what help you need moving in if you need any help. Let Hefe know. They'll fix it for you. Let Hefe's your landlord. <laughs> Whatever you don't like, Hefe will fix. Yeah, you should Not so out. handy handy. All man. these all these people that did work in here, huh? Nothing all these horrible. kids. Lost, like, all these times. minions. Did some work. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the support from uh, buy in the merchandise that we have for sale and from just just watching the videos just watching the videos is a huge support it allows us to do things like this help ed out help others around the community it's you guys that are helping us do this thank you so much thanks for watching